Good afternoon. Sorry I can't be there with you guys at 10 o'clock. We're taking on a ripping. Uh, our game got rescheduled um, due to the uh, winter blizzard that we had a couple of weeks ago. So I'll uh, talk to you guys a little bit about how our presentation, um, our ideas, uh, how you kind of need buy-in, you need relevance, and you need some purpose in, in class to really get kids in before you can get that high tier level of intellectual engagement um, and kind of how that fits into um, kind of a different environment than both Carl and Field have um, in the CAP psychology environment. You know, in, a, in a class where kids are paying to be in the class, um, it's through Lakeland University and they have some um, college credit that comes with it. So how engagement is a little bit different in that um, environment, but it still needs the same three things. You still need to get students to buy in. You still need to make things relevant for kids, and you still need to give them purpose if you want to get uh, engagement. A little bit of background about the actual course itself, and I apologize if you guys can't see this. I'll try to make it as clear as possible. Um, when it comes to, to my class, academic engagement really isn't that much of a problem. Um, looking at my grade book right now, um, 19 of my 28 students in the class, um, they have a B or better. Um, and only two out of 28 have a D, and zero kids are failing. And in fact, of my... Um, three years of teaching this class, I've only failed one kid in um, in CAP psychology. So academic engagement really isn't um, isn't that that much of an issue in class. Um, when it does come to things like behavioral issues and kids being off task on certain things, um, those problems aren't really necessarily there. Um, if a kid is off task, it's not that they're talking or they're um, doing something else. It's just that they might be a little bit disengaged from the material. So we don't really have very many uh, behavioral issues. But when it does come to intellectual engagement, that can sometimes be really low. I usually get a couple of kids who are very intellectually engaged in psychology. Um, they, they go on to be psych majors. A couple of my students actually are psych majors now. Um, but there are plenty of kids in the class who are academically engaged. They're in. They pay for the credit. Um, they want to get their A. But when it actually comes to the intellectual engagement that we're actually going for, that holy grail, that can be a little bit uh, of a problem. So ultimately, um, I'll talk to you guys a little bit about what I think it takes as far as in my class to get kids um, to buy in, to get kids to find some relevance, and to get kids to have some purpose. And then I'll give you some strategies that I use in my in my class. So when it comes to, uh, to what we're looking at in psychology, um, the idea of buy-in is a little bit different in, in psychology class when it is in the CAP environment. Part of what CAP is is you have to pay for the credit. Um, so students literally buy in when they come to my class because they have to pay $90 per credit. Um, but once they're in the door, uh, that gets them there. My job as their teacher then is to convince them to buy into me and to buy into my classroom, to buy into my personality, to buy into um, the type of, of teacher that I am, and to buy into the humor that I have, and to buy into the classroom management that I have, and to buy into the, the personality that I bring in to teaching. Kids are here. They're going to show up because they paid to be here. Uh, my job when it comes to buy-in is getting the kids to buy into me and I don't know what I have to offer in this to buy into to these walls and some of the things that are going on in here. When it comes to the second part of what, uh, what we believe is necessary for engagement is relatable relevance. Psychology uh, is something that needs to be relevant to kids. In fact, I would say that it's of paramount importance. Um, psychology is full of esotericism and jargon and words that people create for simple things to make things more complicated. So on its own, in all honesty, psychology can actually be really boring. I took psychology classes in college that just droned on and on and on and on and on. And I had notebooks full of notes and information, and I didn't really feel connected to it um, at all. So on its own, psych can be really, really boring. But my job every day is to make sure that every lesson is relatable to kids um, in their own lives and their own behaviors. We do a lot of questioning at the end of kind of a content-driven lesson. How does this apply to you? Um, or how have you seen this in your life? How can you better your personality based on what we've learned about defense mechanisms or whatever it might be? Trying to relate the psychology in class to their lives outside of, of my room is kind of what it takes to make things relevant. Because if it's not, then it's just a number of people that did things, names of theories, and ways to describe different things about people and their behavior. But kids need that, uh, that relevance. When it comes to purpose in psychology class, um, they're built uh, on academic engagement when it comes to this CAT class. 
um, right from the get-go, students know that they have unit exams, they know that they're going to have a cumulative final, they know that they're going to have to read their textbook, and they know, quite honestly, that they're going to have to know the information. Uh, so at that point, I don't really feel satisfied that that's their purpose. You know, if the only reason that my kids come to class and do their assignments and read the textbook is because they have to get an A, then uh, we're stuck at that academic engagement. But my job is to give my students purpose in class and their lives outside of class beyond um, the grade, but for how psychology can help them become better individuals, how psychology can help them become better children or future parents or boyfriends or girlfriends or friends or athletes. Um, and that's really my, my fight every day is to get kids not just to do things for the grade and not just to pay attention so you can get it for the test, but to give them that purpose for how psychology really is a field that's built uh, making every person a better human being. So when it comes to buy-in and relevance and purpose, that's kind of what it takes in psychology. So I'd like to spend just a couple of minutes giving you guys some strategies um, that I use in my class. Um, before we get there, though, I thought I would share just a little bit about what I think engagement looks like, it sounds like, it feels like, and then also how I know when engagement is happening in my class. So engagement looks like enjoyment and satisfaction, when I can see those looks on my students' faces. Engagement sounds like discussion and inquiry. When kids are asking questions, they're asking each other questions, and they're building off of their questions. And engagement feels positive and inspiring. When it's happy in my room, when I can tell that kids are having a good time, um, and it's inspiring me to come over and engage them in conversation. When do I know that engagement is happening? Engagement is when students do something without a grade. Engagement is when students say, I can't wait for class today. Engagement is when students say, wow, this class period goes by so fast. Engagement is when students connect class to life outside of it. And that's the big hitter right there. When I hear my kids tell me a story about something and they say, yeah, and then I use this psychology that we learn about. That's kind of engagement for me. So how do I do it? One simple thing I do is I put my desks into pods. Um, for example, you can see the desk pods all throughout my classroom. Um, I think what that does for me is right when students walk into the classroom, they're put into a social situation. Um, and collaboration is naturally um, engagement. Um, also, pods break down some of those barriers to communication. Um, another thing that I do is called a GRASP assignment, and GRASP stands for Goal, Role, Audience, Situation, and Product. Um, and what those different assignments do is they give my students some kind of a role to think from. Like, for example, you're a developmental psychologist, or you're an engineering psychologist. Um, and an audience. You're designing a new toy for expecting parents to come on. You're de designing a program to help teachers um, stimulate cognitive development. Um, and then some purpose, some product to create. You need to create a plan. You need to create a product. Um, and all these grasp um, assignments give students that sense of purpose. It gives them that idea of, all right, this is, this is my role. This is what I'm doing in the real world. Now I have a purpose. Um, and that tends to really get kids a little bit more engaged than just, hey, take notes or read this, uh, read this assignment. Um, something else I do in class that I encourage problem solving. It's kind of related to many of our grasp assignments because most of them have a problem to solve. Um, but with problem solving in psychology, um, it's not always easy, but giving kids some tools and then a problem to solve is a great way to get their kind of motivational gears turning. Um, for example, in, uh, in, in just class last week, um, you can't really see it on here, but students had uh, something called the pendulum problem. And what I was trying to get at was finding out if my students can use deductive reasoning, um, which is a skill that students learn in their fourth stage of cognitive development, according to PHA. Um, and what they had to do, figure out what variables affect the period of a pendulum. So how long it takes the pendulum to swing and come to a stop. Um, and they had multiple weights of washers. Um, they had some string. They had some tape. Um, and then they had some different leveled surfaces to drop their pendulum from. And their goal was to find out what is the variable that has the most effect on it. And to do that, they went through the whole scientific process, and then that demonstrated to them the idea of deductive reasoning. So in that case, I very easily could have just defined deductive reasoning, and they would have you know, gotten on with their day. But in this case, they were engaged with the, with the task because they had a problem to solve. Um, I really like to keep things low stakes in my class when it comes to the learning process. Um, obviously, assessments are, are weighted at a pretty heavy percent of their grade, but the actual learning process, um, I really believe, should be separate from grades. Um, I don't grade very much along the way when it comes to 
to activities or assignments or even group projects, honestly, because um, all of those are built on learning. Students are learning what they need to do. So I keep that pretty low, low stakes when it comes to in-class activities and homework assignments. Um, I also like to bring a lot of healthy competition in my classroom. Um, I keep it light and I keep it fun, but I add some of those elements of competition. Some simple things that we do is we play Kahoot. Um, we even play board games in class. Um, and just a, a simple way that you can use semantics is don't say groups, say teams. Um, don't say uh, part one of an assignment, say level one of an assignment. Um, trying some of those elements to bring in a little bit of competition, a little bit of that healthy game-like atmosphere in the classroom can be really helpful. Um, and lastly, for me, in a college-level class where lecture is part of what I have to do, um, article reading is something that I have to do, um, textbook assignments are something that I have to do, um, mix it up. Uh, direct instruction, like I said, is a part of teaching, especially in a CAP environment, but it isn't everything. So I'm very aware and cognizant of the fact that if I spend a whole period lecturing, which has to happen sometimes, I won't lecture again for at least a day or two. Or if we spend one day and we're doing a lot of discussion, I won't do that again for another day.